In this video, we'll talk about the graph of the polar equation r equals 6 times sine of 3 theta. And I have a graph of that already shown here because you can get a very nice graph of this using a calculator or a computer program. Remember to graph it in radians, where theta is in radians, but you'll get a nice graph. It's very important, however, to understand where the points come from, why the graph looks like it does. So we're going to sketch a graph of this, and ultimately, of course, it will look like this. Now, we have two variables to worry about here. That is theta and r, the radius. And I've got a polar coordinate uh, graph paper here so that it's a little bit easier to graph this. Now, the shape, of course, will look the same as it does on the rectangular coordinate system. So I'll put down theta and r, the two points that we'll, that we'll use to then plot some points. Well, I've got these separated by quite a bit, and the reason is because I am plugging in 3 theta here. I'm evaluating the sine of 3 theta. And so I'll write 3 theta and then sine of 3 theta. And what are those values? So let's build a little table here so we can get our points. Now, I'll plug in here first the yellow, 3 theta. Well, where the sine of what angles are interesting. So uh, sine of the sine function varies between 0 and then 1 and then 0 and then negative 1 and so on. So where does that happen? Well, sine of 0 is 0 and sine of pi over 2 is 1, and sine of pi is 0, and sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. That becomes very interesting when we graph this. And sine of 2 pi is 0, and then it repeats itself again. Now, r, the radius, is just 6 times all of those, 6 times that. So we've got 0, 6, 0, negative 6, 0, and so on. And we will add actually a, a few more values in here. Now, the theta that we're actually going to be using when we're think of it as a as a, a line here that's being swept around this polar coordinate system in whatever the theta uh, angle it is, well, it's going to be a third of whatever we have in this column. So 0 divided by 3, of course, is just 0. But what would we have to multiply by 3 to get pi over 2? Well, that's pi over 6. So if theta is pi over 6, then 3 times theta is pi over 2. OK, continuing on, we've got pi over 3. We have pi over 2. And we have 2 pi over 3. So let's just put a few lines there so it's a little bit easier to see. What are the points that we will plot? The first one is this. When theta is 0, that's right along this, right along this line here. When theta is 0, the radius is 0. So we're right here in the middle. Now, when theta is pi over 6, the radius jumps up to 6. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is our point. Now, in between this radius, this angle of 0, and, and the angle of pi over 6 radians, of course, we're going to have this grow. It's going to get a little bit bigger. So we've got the radius is going to come out here, and then here, and then farther and farther and farther as we sweep through the angle. So it's going to look like this. And, and yeah, you might think I'm cheating by looking at, at this, but you could plug in even uh, minor points and, and get the same thing. So here we have uh, just the beginnings of the graph. What happens next? When the angle is pi over 3 radians, the, the radius is back to 0. So we jump way back to here again, right? So when, when this radius, let's, let's draw a different color line, when this, when this angle theta is pi over, six, pi over 3 radians here, pi over 3 radians, then uh, 
we've got just a radius of zero again. So the points eventually end, end up back here. So, and that is, you could, you could plot this point when the, when the angle is this, whatever this angle is, and you would get this point here, this radius. Okay, moving onward. Next angle, pi over 2. Well, when we have, when we have an angle of pi over 2, our radius is negative 6, and that's why we get this down here. So, that is way down here. So we're looking at this. Our angle now is pi over 2, but we sort we can think of it as we're looking this way, but our radius is a negative 6. So we're going to shoot down this way. So it actually comes out, as you can see in the other graphic, it comes out like this. Let's switch to red and... And we, we get that part of the graph. Okay, moving onward. When the graph is 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, that is now to this angle. Well, we're back at 0. We're back at a radius of 0. So that's right here. And so we have to return home. Wonderful. We've gotten pretty far. We have graphed a lot of this thing. And we're we're out of angles here. So let's let's put some more in. Right? We went through two pi with the three theta, but because because we're multiplying by three, we, we need more of this theta, more out of this theta. So we're going to go another half a pi here. So let's do that. That is 5 pi over 2. That's, that's the, next, the next step. Uh, and so we would say a sine of 5 pi over 2 is 1. And then let's evaluate that. Then, well, 6 times that is 6. And what theta is that? Well, that's 5 pi over 6. Well, that is... That's this angle here. This is the 5 pi over 6 angle. And when, and when the angle is 5 pi over 6, then the radius jumps out to 6 again. So we went from 0 out to 6. And so that's how we got this shape. And all along the way, it's growing and growing as we're going from this angle to this angle. It's growing and growing until ultimately we get all the way out to a radius of 6. Nice. We've gotten there. And now what is the next important uh, value, sine of? Well, it's going to be 3 pi as we keep going around this thing. 3 pi. Well, then the, the sine of 3 pi is 0. And the theta would just be pi. So 3 times pi is just 3 pi, of course. And the radius is 0. So when theta is pi, that is this angle, then the radius goes back to 0. We have right there. So we bring this back home once again. And you might be asking yourself, well, wait a minute. We've only taken theta through pi instead of 2 pi. And, and, and I'm glad you're thinking that, if you are thinking that, because we should consider that. Well, you could do this on your own if, if you wish, and, or, or trust me, that it will repeat itself. If you go through again, it's just going to draw this, this, uh, this graph again. And so that's what happens when you, when you graph this all the way from 0 to 2 pi. This shape just gets drawn again. Okay, that was a very good example of graphing a polar equation.